Hello again. <laughs> Welcome back to the OPL where we are about to get into game number three between Abyss Esports and, <laughs> come on, Avant Guard. Class it up a little bit there. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, getting into game number three, uh, what are we expecting out of this game? Uh, this is a battle for fourth, so we do need to kind of set the stage that this is actually really important because, again, it's uh, Chief's legacy will decide who tonight is on top. Then you got Direwolves in third. Uh, Abyss and Avon have both shown that they can hit hard, but hit once and haven't been able to take series off of top teams, but have been able to take maps off of top teams. Uh, Avon look like a completely different animal when they have their full roster fielded. So it is unfortunate that a lot of their OPL momentum has been slowed down by things like roster changes, by role swaps. Uh, Honestly, going to this third game, if they continue to play like that, it wasn't as clean, but the fact that they have another carry threat like Paradise, even Cheney stepping up on the Jin or on the Ash, really scary for Abyss and Abyss fans. That's kind of what I wanted to touch on as well. Now that Avant, you know, playing with their full roster with Paradise up in the top lane, Cheney Boy, their AD carry, looking a lot stronger coming to game number two. It's a huge difference when they have Paradise up top, Cheney Boy, AD carry. And you know, he's statistically the second best AD carry in the league as well, based on his kill participation, his CS per minute. So they're looking great doing that. I hope we can continue seeing that. To me, it's kind of like this difference between Ibis are just a little bit cleaner in their shot calling, mm -hmm. but Avant are just a bit more... They're kind of like the wild card factor almost, that they just pull out kind of like these crazy plays. Even though if you look pound for pound in terms of talent on the roster, I actually really favor Abyss. I really like Seb. Um, I really like Pac-Man. I think they're both very strong in the roles. You've got Triple versus Luch, so they're very close competitive teams. But for whatever reason, uh, Avant can just turn it on. All right, cool. So if you are that macro-oriented team and you're going up against someone that you know is very strong mechanically, what are you looking to do? Is it lane swap? Because they did have a very good lane swap. Is it that you can't afford to make mistakes like they did in the bottom lane? Do you have to pick a different kind of composition? What are we looking at here? That's exactly it. They should go back to uh, their strengths. They should play a macro game, be very clean. It was really a mistake by them in terms of uh, their decision making to overstay on the bottom lane that opened up that opportunity for Paradise. So just clean it up, tighten it up, and hopefully walk for away. For the, the record, victory. guys, by the way, I'm still waiting for the day that Froskurin, who is a very, like, Froskurin's ideal way of playing League of Legends is never run into the opponent. One day she is going to turn around and be like, you know what? They should just pick three assassins. <laughs> they should run at the enemy team and they can team fight. It's not happened today, but one day I have faith. No, the irony is, is that as the LPL person on the desk, my ideal way of playing League of Legends is to play so aggressively and so quickly that you force mistakes out of the enemy opponent and then capitalize it versus like kind of the Korean way you play super defensive. So is that what we're expecting out mistakes? of avant-garde? You know, just pick up some heavy initiation in their bottom lane, let Paradise go back to a bruiser and play that quick tempo League of Legends? That's how they should play because that's where they find the most success. All right, cool. With that in mind, Fish, I guess, you know, I, you are known as the hedge better. That is the nickname that I have given you quite fondly on this desk. I call and I the do flip flopper. Yeah, all right, the <laughs> flip flopper. That also works. I do want to give you the opportunity because, you know, going into this, you're very hyped about Abyss. Now that you see the Avant Garde roster coming back together, do you think that they can pick up this game number three? <sighs> Chenny won't paradise back. Yes, I'm going to do another hedge bet. They're going <laughs> to pick up game number three here. They're going to take down Abyss. This guy is unbelievable. I, I knew he was going to do it. I, uh, he's <laughs> he sitting was. there in the gravy. He gets a little bit more well, excited about it. The best part is if Avant win, I'm now number one in dunk tank predictions. You realize so that, <laughs> that Abyss lost that game on their own mistakes, right? That they set themselves up. Okay, so that it wasn't Avant <laughs> being proactive. All right, let, let's bring it back. If us go to the other end of the desk, it, are you still faithful <laughs> in Abyss's macro play then? Yeah, I, I think Abyss are cleaner. I do think that um, they're not outclassed pound for pound in terms of like the talent. Like the fact that Paradise went off on Jax, yes, it's nice to see that they can do that as opposed to, you know, uh, Triple D and kind of stumbling up in that top lane. But Pac-Man is still so good and he can very easily be a viable threat as well if given the, the circumstance. All right, cool. So, you know, we do have a little bit more. Uh, no, we don't have any more time. We're ready to get into League of Legends action for game number three. So here is Skippy and Wally for one more time. Whoa, Wally, things getting a little bit heated over there on the desk. Excited to see what's going to happen here in game number three. Because, of course, Abyss, their chance to try and bounce back after a difficult game number two. And you know what's funny to me is that Fish, whilst he's now considered the hedge better, actually went for Avant anyway. Mm. And so now he's just back where he started because he couldn't make his mind up to begin. If you hedge that much, you have there's to just, eventually there's actually come full just circle. No hedge left. Oh my goodness! It's gone. He's just—it's it's all about mowing, I guess. But let's get into champion select here. Yeah, exactly. The man's just mowing down hedges. As Victor's going to be banned, Twisted Fate also taken off the rift. Here as Avant and Abyss have got into getting rid of champions first up. We'll see what is going to happen now that AV are now back on the blue side. <laughs> I think we know what's going to happen in this draft phase based off number two and one when we look at each respective game that the yeah. opposite side won. I think 
Jax probably going to be taken off the rift. Yep. That's something that we would have to say Abyss would be a little bit scared of, but AV decides they don't want it. Yeah, of course, AV banded in game number one as well. We'll see whether the Trundle is going to follow things like this. Victor doesn't want to be looked at here by AV. And I'm curious that with the Jax ban, maybe they look towards the Shen with it. And it's not entirely Pac-Man focused. Of course, Paradise has a fantastic Echo that'll get taken away from him. We've seen a lot of targets that can now come out of blue side where Abyss are actually doing the same thing and now they're forced into a third ban. And they basically get to ban anything here knowing that Abyss have to ban the Vladimir. Vladimir. And Rise is still available. So AV could ban the Rise or they choose the Vlad. Oh my goodness. This is interesting. They don't, ne they don't need to do that. But no. maybe they're just too afraid of Abyss's Vlad and they want to first pick something really particular like the Rank Sight again. Yeah, well they didn't want to play the Vladimir themselves. It's an interesting idea. It has to be the Rex I first pick. Yeah. And Shelby has played it in back-to-back -back games, so it would make sense. Mm. However, Seb did look good on the, Gra the Gragas. We'll see whether he heads towards something like that again. Is Azir going to be banned away from triple? Makes sense. Picked away first game, banned second game, now banned again. Well, with the Victor gone and the Azir having to follow, you've now got a lot of mid lane bans once again. Yeah. Of course, Ryze can be what Luch goes towards, mm -hmm. which would make sense. And now they have to choose here with Triple. Is do they actually look towards taking the Rise away? Or do they secure that Rek'Sai again for Chelby? Well, they've done exactly that. Worked out game number two. Not so much game number one. We'll see what Abyss decide to go with now. Do they pick away, once again, the Karma, something like that? They grab their bottom lane if they feel like it. But Pac-Man's Trundle's available. Mm -hmm. Shen, of course, still up. Yeah, so Shen's still there. And of course, they could look towards their jungle roll if they'd like, maybe have a lease again. Or they can secure the Karma, something the T-Gun is very much preferential towards. You'd know that AV would be playing Bard on the flip side anyway if he does that again. Jakey's been doing well. That is a very good point. There's also the Ash if they want to take it from Chenny, who has still shown that he can now play Jin. So it's going to be a lot less about target picking away from the opponent. It's more so about picking for yourself. And Raid, he's comfortable on that Ash. Yeah, and he was actually landing some very good arrows there as well. We'll just see whether the rest of the team is going to be able to adequately follow it up and whether Paradise is once again going to find himself a ridiculous lead. Like that teleport play towards the bottom side of the map. Which was largely what attributed to the outcome of that game. 4-0-0 mm -hmm. jacks, a bit of a problem. So Paradise still has his Echo available. He knows that he's against the Shen. He can definitely look towards something that was banned from him in the second game. Yeah. And now that he's in that top lane, he stamped his foot down so that I am the big carry. Pac-Man's gone another defusal route. He can still look for a split-pushing threat, and something that Avia did quite well was that 1-3-1 one, one style. Because we won't... We probably won't see that until their last part of the draft. Yeah. And as well, I mean, we have to remind everyone that Paradise's Echo isn't sort of the normal tanky top lane Echo. It is the Rod of Ages variety that does a heck of a lot of damage. Ooh, you're thinking of Praetith. Oh, really? Yeah. Paradise, I'm pretty sure was... I'm looking at both of his games here. Was it? Nah, he was a tank. He was against Chiefs last time around. Yeah, he was playing tank. He went 6-4-5, and five, though, and then 3-3-7 three, three, and seven against the Chiefs, arguably the best team at the moment in the OPL, given standings alone. So definitely decent work so far as Chelby going to lock away the Sivir for Chenny Boy and Triple is going to jump back on the Bard but not revealing any of their hands so far. Yeah, and they were looking at Jin, but they changed their mind and said they wanted the, Swift, uh, the Sivir which may indicate they want to run forward at their opponents. Of course, Bard to pick them, Sivir to press the Arcane and enable at least the Rek'Sai. Whatever Paradise goes for, he's going to have options now because he'll be empowered quite heavily. Yeah. Wow, Luch, that's a scary hover. For a man that farms as well as you, you'd have like an 800 stack Nax Nasus in like 19 minutes. <laughs> Not what we're going to see, I'd imagine. Right. Ooh, but T-Gun. Going to go towards Jakey's favorite in the Nami. He locks that one away. Seb once again on the Gragas. A ton of knockups already. And when Luch locks in this Yasuo for the last pick, I'm going to be very excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will be as well if we see that, let me tell you. But still, we have to see what AV lock in before Abyss have their last pick. As a four-man unit, though, from Abyss Esports, it's got a bit of engage again, a fair bit of disengage. I feel like they have a happy medium where I can go in, I can go back, I can 
play League of Legends in variable ways. Yeah, and they're getting into a lot of AoE damage out of Luch here as well. Yeah, they need damage. In this mid lane. See what he can bring out. Not a lot of the big AoE champions available. If you're looking at things like Victor, things like Azir, they are on the bench. Once again, he can go to the rise. And Aurelia is still up, actually, for Paradise if he wants it. Yet to see him play champions like that. But yeah, we know he no. can. Surely he's a carry player. Well, it certainly is. They are going to lock that one away there. Zillion comes in for triple. So that's what he's going to take into the mid lane. Let's see what the answer is out of Luch. Hmm. But this does feel like a yes a little bit. Might. A little, it's not. But it <laughs> might. Every comp's a Yasuo comp if you're a Yasuo man. Yeah, especially if you see a Gragas. You're Just, like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's the moment. Of yeah. course, Lee Sin as well. But what we've got now from AV as a finished team composition is a very hard to kill Aurelia. Oh, yeah. And a lot of the team deciding that Aurelia is the carry of the team. With a Zillion to ult him, a Bard to disengage or get onto the backline to set him up, and a Siva who's self sufficient and can try and hit the backline whilst also hitting the frontline. I've got a lot of damage to complement on this AV side. Also, yeah, really like the Tempered Fate in conjunction with Aurelia, just because she doesn't necessarily like to fight one versus five. Her passive still works if there's two people that are golden hanging around. So you can't be CC, but you've only got a couple of people to fight. Wow. As the Varus is going to be locked in here by Luge, so going all towards the poke style here out of Abyss, and it looks like that engage-disengage that you were talking about is a little bit more akin to that disengage at the moment based on how they probably want to play this one out. Yeah, it looks like they're running a poke comp here from Abyss and it feels very heavy-handed in that direction. And looking at their damage, honestly, you could still stack armor on the side of AV. Yeah. Maybe get through to what is the Abyss team composition. Seb will have to go the Runic Echoes. Pac-Man, of course, with his Sunfire means they'll have a lot of mid-game magic damage, but it scales off quite heavily. And it's important that Abyss actually get themselves a lead early. They could fall pretty substantially into a hole. AV, they don't exactly have defusal of poke. Their defusal is engaging you. Yeah, well, we'll see where that Abyss can actually get themselves into a situation where they do want to run this, because does the poke comp of this nature work sort of around turrets? Do they have a sieging comp here as well that could possibly work out? Yeah, I think the poke comp's got a fair bit of siege to it simply because they can lock you down and secure, I think, Gragas with a bit of zone. But ultimately, it's poke until they're low enough that you can actually siege. Yeah, well, we'll see whether they can actually get that one done. As ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. Use the hashtag AVWIN if you think that AV can take back-to-back -back games and finish off this series 2-1. to one. Or if you think that Abyss, it was just, just a one-time thing, game number two, they are going to be able to turn this one around. Use that hashtag AEWIN and let us know whether you think Abyss Esports are going to take this one down because, man, it's all come down to this. The battle for fourth. We'll see who's going to be able to get there because this could be one of our finalist teams. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is very important for AV in particular. have showed a lot of potential coming into this game. Abyss, first split in the OPL, have started on the right foot, and they do still have a lot of growth to go with them. So very strong potential start from this team. But AV, they're the ones who are the long-standing members on the back of the experienced Chelby that should be able to take it to their opponents. Yet, I wouldn't call them outright favorites. Yeah, we have to remember as well that, of course, AV did win the 2014 league. <laughs> Yes, very, they did. A very different team, of course. Chelby was a part of it, though. So, as an organization, definitely no victories. See whether they can harden themselves up. Take this one down, get themselves one step closer to that semi final. Well, Avant technically won the winter regional before that as well, following up. Oh, yeah, true. Maybe an entirely different team. Don't you dare get rid of those ducks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Luch. Yeah. Fan start, though, from Abyss. Not exactly matched by AV, who don't know what the lane assignments are going to be, as Raid and Luch are having a conversation. Yeah, well, they've both got bows, you know. Raid thought it was funny. Triple gave him a bomb. Not going to take too much damage from a level 1 triple with the bomb. Does have himself the cleanse this time around. Triple not falling into the same trap that he did in game number 1. So I was having a conversation with Pabu from one of the OCS teams. Trident, yeah. And... Uh, he basically just messaged me and said Zillion's disgusting because you can go back to base at level 3, get a second Doran's Ring and clear the entire back wave oh, with gross. two bombs, which provides a lot of map pressure. It also means that you can clear the waves quickly, force Luch perhaps to miss some under the turret, and it might mean that all of the pressure that he's going to have could go a little bit to waste because he's too busy hitting minions. Oh. Jake is able to pick one up. Oh, it's a popcorn chicken. 
for the bard as Tegan in trouble here as Paradise just surges on top of him, gets the auto attack off. Nice uh, ebb and flow comes out from Tegan to keep himself relatively alive, but that is definitely a speculative term at the moment. Jake does, oh my goodness, that was so close to hitting as the piercing arrow does hit triple. Fluch ghosting away, does still have the flash. Walks him the long way though, Jakey. Of course, Zillion was looking to cut him off with two bombs if it came to it. And so what they do is they get one summoner spell. Tegan's conveniently here to ensure that... Yeah, that was very cute. He doesn't need to use his potion. Triple takes a little bit more harassment as he's just clocking down these waves. This guy can creep, picks himself up a bomb. We'll see. This looks like it will possibly move towards that farm lane situation. Yeah, but Lucha always has a slight edge unless Triple gets directly on top of him with Burst. Sometimes you can cheese on those minions and actually poke somebody's health bar out. Lucha always having the range advantage means that Triple's focusing more on minions. Luch is a happy medium between poke and minions. Interesting thing about, uh, as we do have a lane swap, ladies and gentlemen, but the interesting thing about sort of poke versus zillion is that it's actually really difficult to make your ultimate work all that effective. As Zillion, yes. Uh, you have to time it quite well. But team fighting, of course, will have a easier ways to utilize it. Not always going down onto yourself. The problem, once again, is if you can win the minion battle. Yep. Really he's going to be able to is Chenny Boy. Clears out these minions. Paradise. Get a little bit more help. The ricochet launches itself down, and AVR are going to be able to lock down this outer turret very, very easily and get a nice wave bounce there as well. Same thing in happen as Pac-Man, with the help of Raid, takes that one down. Magical Journey is going to get Jacob Shelby all the way in here. Double bomb lands, Luch holding on to his flash. Isn't going to get taken down. More piercing arrows flying through, triple taking. Increased damage from that one, as you can see, Shelby still looking for this one. Now, lots of pressure being placed in this middle lane. As Luch smartly clears that tunnel, to be honest, because Shelby being nearby, as you mentioned, could have been an easy way in. Seb now, though. There's the flash body slam. Triple in trouble. That's a cheeky auto attack, and Luch grabs first blood. Abyss. This is exactly where they want to be. And he didn't even get to flash triple. He could have cleansed, flashed. Didn't want to risk it. Nice flash body slam from Seb. You have to assume that he's going to do that, but there was no reaction from the Zillion. He just let it happen. And now Luch, even though a lot of attention has been brought onto him. He still is ahead in this lane. Yeah, and that was with all the aggression going towards Luch here as well, and now he's picked himself up first blood. Cleared out all of these minions. That double Dorans, like you were talking about, has come in from triple, so see whether he can keep this wave cleared, but 38 to 23, Luch will have an easy tier. We'll see what else he can pick up. And we're still gonna see the second part of this lane swap AV slightly ahead. In that respect, even with Jakey making a couple of visits to that middle lane. It could be a nice to have thing here for the AV team. Melee minions are at least going to meet this wave, so maybe taking a little bit of the aggro. We'll see how AV are going to go. This wave does finally make it towards this turret. Aurelia making her way in. We'll be able to help out for the back half of this turret take. Yeah, it'll go down in decent time. Like, Shen will actually crash to the turret at the exact same timing, realistically. And from this point is where the real questions actually start to break out is, Paradise, will they get freezes for him? Will they actually secure the Aurelia more fun than that of the Shen? <coughs> or will they actually be able to defuse that quite well on AV's side, or on uh, Abyss's side, rather, and keep the Shen in it? Because game number two, Oh, well, hang on. Yeah, Luch actually going to flash this time. The Ignite's ticking down as Prey Seeker is going to help it try and take a kill, but it doesn't. Once again, Luch back to base. This tower is eventually going to fall. That's not going to fall. Pac-Man's going to die. Oh, that was close. That shield kept him alive. Yeah. He's lucky to be alive right now. Pac-Man will still get out. You can't question it. It does mean that he won't be able to stay and farm the wave, though which is something that Paradise is doing, and that's actually really unfortunate. We question if the Aurelio will get ahead. This is, I think, what I'd define as ahead. This is what we call overpushing, actually breaking almost that freeze. That teleport was good. Yeah, so Pac-Man is going to be able to hold on to this minion wave. Shields himself up there with his sword. He's going to be able to hold on to these minions. Grab himself with his cannon creep, but still very far behind, 30 to 8. He will hold this, though, if he can, and if his health bar can sustain it and keep it as a freeze. 
which ultimately means that whilst it's 30 to 9, he will be okay. He will close that gap and keep himself within touching distance of Paradise. But as of this moment on Summoner's Rift, the Aurelia is super far ahead. And there's also the fact that I believe a freeze has actually been achieved on the top side of the map as well. So Raid also having a bit of a good time with the minion wave. Which is why we have to now look towards AV and say how are they going to react to this fact. Not a double bomb, not going to quite find Luch. That's exactly right. It was worried for him. But as a Varus, you can stand relatively far back, keep things farmed out. He's looking towards maybe a stun on the minion there, Jakey. I don't think he'll actually go under the turret T-Gun there. But with Rek'Sai nearby, actually there it is. Yeah, so Cosmic Binding doesn't find it. Bomb neither. Luch once again dodging away from his fate, and I do like it. This guy has been playing very defensively. Actually given up some CS as well, which is not something that he does all the time. And now the AD carries 1v1 on the top side. Raid's level 6. Yeah, he's just going to try and face tank this one. The arrow will be there. Nice spell shield, but it's not enough. Chenny Boy, that's all he was thinking about. But it just wasn't able to get it done. No, he actually started running away. Didn't even flash and use the heal early, which is something that Raid still had in his back. So I don't think he was ever looking like dying. As AD carries, for no particular reason, met in combat in a 1v1 on the top side of the map. There's the tunnel as Pac-Man still holding this minion wave. Seb unable to grab his blue. The thing is, that didn't even break the freeze. And so Raid's now got a kill in his back pocket and is further ahead. Is now going to push that wave in, which means that they could look towards Aurelia going top lane. But they've immediately made this move towards the Drake first. And Abyss, at least Seb, is about to spot them. See, Triple is moving his way over there as well. So Seb does need to be a little bit careful. There are four members of Avant around here. Flashes, the Ignite's already been used. Nice bounce there from T-Gun. But probably not too worried about this Cloud Drake falling. No, let's give it up. It's a Cloud Drake. It's not worth fighting for unless you're going to guarantee get kills. And they weren't going to have any guarantees there. Well, Bax now going to come in. Paradise not level 6 yet. Pac-Man has hit it. As you can see, Raid now moving down the mid lane. 18 CS in the lead. BF Sword picked up as well as Luch now has a Mana Mune in his back pocket. For Abyss are actually getting to their item spikes yeah, quite nicely. Bad. Definitely not bad in terms of spike timing. Of course, I think they're just relying on Seb now to finish his Runic Echoes, and then you'd say they're complete enough. They can still look towards picks as well using that Varus, but with Ash sitting in that middle lane, feels like he's just hanging out. At this point, with all the turrets taken, you would expect Ash Arrows to actually start breaking their way out. Because if they don't, they don't start pushing something, the same problem will happen, and the Paradise will have a freeze. At the moment, they have two freezes, in fact. Well, that's why Abyss are probably doing this Rift Herald, before they decide to try and break any of those freezes. See AB making their way over. They in the lead. Is T-Gun going to get stunned up? Edge blows his way in as Pac-Man is able to pick that one up. And it works out nicely, because Avant already had the Drake. Yeah, which means they essentially trade objectives around the map whilst having these freezes back in return. But still, the response from Abyss is right. They invade, they push for every single thing. Try and force that teleport out of Paradise. Oh, that's piercing arrow. Seb knocking. Oh, he just delivers a bomb to raid. That's not very nice. No, it's not. Still, they are looking, maybe diving. Arrow still up. Anyway, level six. Does have a lot of movement speed and the spell shield's there. They can grab that though. We'll be able to take that one down. But nice wave clear comes in. Now he's only got a bit of a hammer. In the back and forth. Yeah. Definitely still commences. Once Raid's finding it hard to get any farm in his back pocket, Chenny's able to close that gap. Puts himself back to even. Middle lane's still a 10 CS difference, though. Where Luch, I would say, is well and truly in control as long as Triple doesn't have a blue. But... Well, there's the Flash. Stand United comes in here as well as the Chains of Corruption are down, but Pac-Man arrives a little bit too late. This is mid laner does fall down. No summoner spells remaining. Pac-Man going to get bombed. Arrow. The arrow is going to find triple. That's the target he wants, but Pac-Man just too low to go in. And you can see both of those freezes remain on this map. Yeah, they're still getting further ahead through the AD carry and top lane position. If triple can hold the fort here, doesn't have a lot of mana to his name, but he does have wave clear. And now that Raid doesn't have his Ash Arrow, it comes down to what Seb can do. I think they can defend this. And in that case, AV actually get a fantastic pick. Well, you can see bombs are going to come in here at the same time. 
Clears out the majority of that creep wave. Jenny Boy looking Ooh, for nice some sort stun. of pick. Yeah, there's the Cosmic Binding. Nice Ebon Flow comes out of T-Gun. Raid still has that heal, remember? Man does not have a twitchy heal button. And still Aurelia is farming. Legend has it. She's still frozen that bottom wave. Yep. Oh, it's not Legend. I mean, we can see it. Well, I mean, we haven't. Oh, that's true. I can see her icon, though, just hanging out. What's 73 to 41, though, man, that's massive. What's the thing called? Like a, an actual legend? Like the map or something. Like Whoa, Whoa, Shelby. Hey, Shelby. Welcome to your red buff. That is not where you want to be. Raid looking to steal that one away. Aurelia still not going to be moving over here. Oh, my God. Steals it with a Prey Seeker. What a beast. <laughs> that probably should not have happened. That was well and truly blind. Yeah, that shouldn't have happened at all. Of course... By getting that means that Shelby will have a lot of health regeneration. So that Rexile will be quite happy with that. Paradise. Yeah, there's the explosive cast of Paradise does. Flash, Raid able to slow him down. Fantastic bubble out of T-Gun. Raid's going to be able to pick up the kill, but on the hunt flies through. You can see the Boomerang doing some work here as Jenny Boy may be overly aggressive as Abyss. Are going to use the teleport to get the back in, but it's a double kill for Raid. This man has turned it on in this game. Three and zero now on that Ash. And Picking up on the mistakes of AV is Ray. Chenny's being far too aggressive. Thinks he can bite off more than he actually can and has died for it twice now. Two Raid, respectively. It might be disrespectively, honestly. <laughs> that Ash is putting in work. I like it, Wally. Good stuff. You can see backs coming in from Abyss, but I don't believe they broke that freeze on the bottom side of the map. Oh, I'm going to have to rename. I can't be called Wally. Why not? And have a legacy jersey on. What do you got to be? I mean, I can't be the top laner of Legacy. I'm now stealing someone's name. Nice he's Tally. He just used to be Wally. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Fine. All right. He just got half his name. All right. And I'm Skippy. It's like almost Swippy. <laughs> it's like Big Skips. It. Yeah. Big Skips. <laughs> uh, we'll have to ask him. See whether, see whether Swipe is okay with it. Because, you know, I mean, my parents did name me this, but it's just probably not appropriate considering my shoutcasting career as a kangaroo. Just won't let me have the good grass. <laughs> you know? T-Gun. Anyway. Not going to get bombed this time around, but takes half of his health bar. This triple has his Rod of Ages stacking. A couple of extra stacks. That might have been fish food. Jake, this for a cosmic finding. Doesn't get it. Chains of Corruption come in. Jake taking a lot of damage. There's the arrow. Nails him! And there's a couple more auto attacks. Nice work from Bard Triple to keep him alive. There is another piercing arrow. Raid still doing work though. Moving very far forward. Tempted Fate is going to lock him down. Oh. As, oh god, Luch picks up the kill. Raid now getting bombed. You can see Aurelia falls on the top side of the map as they're doing double duty. And Luch, my gosh, he's hit level 10. He's got max points and piercing arrow. He's doing so done. much work. Chenny always wants a battle, this man. He is on the Huntress. They may not know it, but they definitely are done here. As Chenny's now pushing his luck against multiple parties. A nice spell shield stops the slow from the Hail of Arrows. But you can see Luch smacking down on that Sivir, who now has to go back to base. And Seb has found a body slam onto Chelby. Nice tunnel, gets him out. Seb didn't have the ultimate as he used it to kill Paradise on the top side of the map. And at this point in the game, I think it's safe to say that he should be a Jin instead of a Sivir, simply because of the way that he is playing them. We do get to see how Paradise... Oh, nice last body slam. Met his defeat, that was actually a really good ultimate from Seb. But all else. Yeah. He hit that at the same time as an Aurelia Q, and he just does go down sooner or later. Meanwhile, on the top left of your screen, it yeah. was a Drake. Yeah, so the Mountain Drake does fall. Paradise looking for Pac-Man. Wants his revenge, actually, as Jake's going to make his way over. Nice little shrine. He's going to get in there. Pac-Man looking to try and turn this one around. Just the W not lasting long enough, and Paradise is going to get himself a kill. So... The Aurelia, now the Trinity Force. But Jakey being here means that they're going to trade in this middle lane. And once again, Abyss feel like they are one step ahead of AV. And with that poke that they have out of the Varus, they have constant dive threat when they have a numbers advantage. And yes, it was good from Jakey and Paradise to get the kills. You could definitely feel like they are trying to snowball that Aurelia. The rest of the map is starting to fold. And if Pac-Man has ever been something in his life, it's the best sacrificial lamb ever. This man has almost made his OPL career on it. But ulti on. Looks pretty good. Luch is actually going to get caught down. Immediately going to be stunned there as well. As, oh no! Shelby picks it up and takes a chain of corruption. Luch picks up the kill. Nice instant flash after the Tempered Fate. The second bomb not going to be picked up. AV do utilize it in order to disengage. 
No tower to fall down. This minion wave now going to be at Lucha's mercy. You know what happens at that point. Feels, feels like Shelby was just straight clowning on that one. Yeah. The Zillion Bard combo is fantastic. And we didn't touch on that because I was waiting to see it. Bard ults someone. Zillion places two bombs on exactly where they were going to come out of the stasis. And they are stunned again so that you can deal damage to them. But Shelby tunnels his way in, takes one of the bombs. Maybe Stops forgot. that stun combo, and the flash out from Luch is enough to keep him alive. They get the immediate turnaround. A mistake from AV off the back of their decision to be aggressive. It's not what you want to see. All right, well, we'll see whether they are able to get that combo to work next time. Maybe with multiple members there as well, because it's not capped by people. And Triple is going to be doing a lot of damage, especially when he augments this build with a few more items. You know, you can still feel like the major concern for Abyss lies in the, the physical damage that they're dealing pretty much exclusively. Look at the items now starting to be built on the side of AV. Yeah. And recognize that even going for the armor boots, the ninja tabby. Maybe it's time for a wit's end. Out of that. You know, get that magic damage happening. Teleport's going to come in here. Triple looking to double bomb up. Pac-Man takes a lot of damage, actually. As JQ over to the side. Paradise launched into this Abyss team. And Seb once again going to end his Jack life. Tegan looking for more. Slows him down with the tie Caller's Blessing as the Magical oh. Journey going to get followed by the arrow. And Seb just jumps in there behind him. Now right in the back line. But Jake flashes after him. Seb now in trouble as Jenny's going to turn. But look at this piercing arrow damage. Jenny just right in the enemy team as Raid going to get bombed up and destroyed. Triple still off to the side. Getting work done. Still has the ultimate but doesn't use it on his jungler. Just didn't find the target that he wanted to save. Yeah, he was super zoned away. Lucha's positioning with that red buff was quite forward. Which means at this stage in the game, they get themselves a fantastic team fight. We spoke towards the armor being built by AV, but it's not there yet. And so at this point, whilst Abyss are ahead, they stay there and actually secure an even bigger lead. Catching Paradise out, using that Ash Arrow through a magical journey means they can't dodge it as well. Very well played. Yeah, I really like that, guaranteeing the arrow to hit. Even if you turn into a penguin, you yeah. just watch it coming. Oh dear. And you get further and further away, get stunned for longer and longer. Yeah, you got stunned for a long time. Yeah. Sad times. Well, Luch going to continue clearing out minion waves, as you can see. AV moving up towards this barren area. It's going to be spawning in 15 seconds. It's exactly what they want. His Infernal Drake will be up in approximately two and a half minutes, something like that. Blue buff going to be welcomed by Luch. Yeah, Luch 5 and 1 right now. The star player on his team being the star that they need. Yeah, having a star performance as well this game. Yeah, the third and final game. The battle essentially for fourth place. And if Abyss Esports can beat a full roster AV, practice aside, that's scary. Oh, there's a chance of corruption immediately followed by the arrow there as well. Cleanse is not enough for that as Luch is going to get altered up by Pac Man. Now moving back in, nice double stun comes out from Triple. And Abyss have been poked down. So this tower also oh. taking a lot of damage. Triple in so much. Oh, explosive <laughs> cast finishes him off as the Tempered Fate locks down both carries, but it's just not quite enough. They don't buy enough time. And Paradise is still on the top side of the map. The poke still flying forward. Whether it be volleys, piercing arrows, oh. there are arrows everywhere. So he stopped the recall as well, Paradise. They are going to concede this one. They just outright give it up. Triple going down. Didn't use the ultimate on himself. It does feel like now he's actually struggling to find that button. And you can see Jenny Boy as well. He's now off to the side. Not a lot he can do. That turret is going to fall down. So inhibitor turret falls. Inhibitor stays alive. So that is a big deal here for Avant. However, Abyss looking fantastic in game number three. Yeah, they definitely are. Abyss have set themselves up a little bit more efficiently than they did in the second. They haven't given Paradise that absolute snowball that he had as well. They've defused him. Seb's been looking at him. And it feels like AV's strategy was ultimately quite telegraphed. It most certainly was. As Baron's live for 20 seconds on the Infernal Drake. You can see AV with good positioning as Looch is going to get caught out. And unfortunately, we are going to see a pause because I believe Luch was not there. That's how it seems, it's Mr. It Skippy. Like. Yeah. I almost forgot your name for a second. Yeah, very unfortunate stuff. And that was right in time for the Infernal Drake. So for what it's worth, yeah, that's not good. No, that is a, that is a bad news animals on the desk situation. I was going to say bears, but I mean, 
we're not bears. It's just it's mar we're marsupials, and we can't. We're not even anywhere near a bear. Well, we kind of are. I guess marsupials close to mammals. What? So I'm just I'm trying to work out what my species what? is. I'm having an identity crisis here, Wally. <laughs> I mean, bears are no. <laughs> it's we're so far from that. Oh, we, well, we, well, we got fur. Bears have got fur. I got a pouch. Well, speaking of animals, the dragon was up soon. Yeah, that's very true. But we are going to throw it back to the analyst desk because they're not going to talk about marsupials and mammals. They're going to talk about the game. Thank you so much, Skippy. <laughs> Where we could talk about bears or marsupials, or we could talk about the game. I guess I'll leave it up to my analysts. Uh, I'm going to jump right in on this game because I think that this was kind of set up perfectly for what we said in uh, the block going into this game. Is this fact that Abyss they can win through playing the map, whereas uh, AV can kind of play to their strengths of you know Luch and Paradise and just their raw power in their positions. <laughs> Excuse me, um, Triple and Paradise and their raw power positions. So. Abyss did this really cool thing, uh, and Avant did it as well, where we're having deep freezes, and we're kind of bouncing really big waves on the side when we go into a lane swap. But the difference between them right now is the fact that anytime Abyss have a big wave pushing and Avant are deep freezing it, they're trading that pressure point for an objective. In this case, it was kind of the Rift Herald was kind of the, the big major one. But the thing is, is when uh, Avant have waves pushing against Abyss and Abyss are freezing, it was traded for a Cloud Drake, which doesn't necessarily matter. Like if it's an Inferno or Mountain, obviously it means more. But the other big issue is that they have nothing to break that mid lane freeze. And just from this alone, it's given Abyss a nice 3,000 gold lead over Avant. So it's an uphill battle for Avant from here onwards. It's going to be difficult for them to come back. And Abyss have really played to their strengths so far. Yeah, they certainly have, guys. We are just chilling out here on the analyst desk because we have had one of the players disconnect. We're going to be getting back into the game in a couple of minutes. So stay with us. We will be resuming action quite soon. However, this is what I want to talk about because, you know, it's a straight line wave clear. The theory of Victor, Azir, Varus, why they're popular in the meta versus someone that's a little bit of an old school control mage and fits into the more of the Orianna. I guess Zillion, you have to throw him in there as well. And Nivea even, they need minions to clump up before they can kill them. They need to go into the standard front to back. They can't kill them on the way down the wave. And that means that Abyss, their mid lane turret never came under fire, really. Exactly. They've got, like you said, 280 carries. They have so much wave clear. And again, it's just so much pressure on the Zillion in the mid lane because he's competing not only against the uh, the chains, what chains of corruption, corruption yep. as well as the giant enchanted crystal arrow, but also the fact that Gragas could just rock up at any point, dump a cask behind him, and then break the freeze. That's what Gragas has always been really good at. And another pick I want to talk about just quickly, sorry to jump in, is the fact that they went back to the Ash one more time. It didn't work in game number two, but this time, <laughs> Mr. Ray getting some solo kills, killing out Chenny boys in the 1v1. That, that was a pretty impressive play. It's not even just his 1v1 against Chenny where he had the level six, and it was pretty much just a game of chicken of when you're going to use the spell shield. I think that... Uh, Chinny actually did use the spell shield yeah, on the it. Ice Arrow, yeah. but mm -hmm. unfortunately it's kind of like, I'm level 5 anyway, I'm just getting walked down. But even in the mid lane, when Raid goes to break the mid lane tower, he uh, flashed a double bomb stun from Zillion. He walked uh, around so many different skill shots, was very far aggressive in his positioning, putting out his damage, knowing that he was safe. It was actually Jake's bard ultimate that saved his life because yeah. Rek'Sai was going to kill him and allowed him the time to flash out of the double bomb position, but... Like, Raid is going off. And this is great for Abyss because they're fixing a lot of mistakes that they made in game with number two and all the errors they had against a full Avant lineup and showing that they can really take it to Avant even though they're building their full roster today. All right, we'll see where they can do it because we have heard that Abyss are ready to get back onto some of those rifts. So here are our shoutcasters to take us there. Thank you very much, Spawn. And look, we're very excited to get back into the match. Of course, Abyss versus Avant. We'll see who's going to be able to make it out of this one. The Infernal Drake has just spawned Wally. And that's important news. Yeah, about 15 seconds till it spawns, I believe, once we get back in. And we're at crucial time in this game. As you can see, Luch was trying to make his way back. And Pac-Man as well is going to disengage. This will probably give that dragon over to AV. So they are now maneuvering around. It might be the mid lane turret that they decide to prioritize. Yeah, so the mid lane turret would be a bit easier for them to look at. You have to remember who they're against, though. Gragas, Nami, Ash. Looks like they want to dive it. Well, there's the double bubble as well. Nice disengage comes out from Seb, but Raid will take two bombs. Take Playing a lot of his slow. health bar. Without loot there, and this is the thing, like, to get the Drake, it's in the middle ground, it might be easier to get. To get this turret against the Varus, not easy. No. So looking towards this, actually very good priority from AV, knowing they have a window to do so. Not to mention the waves are now in their favor as well. That top wave, gigantic, and Abyss will want to pick that one up. Nice stun as Seb is picked off, potentially. Tidal wave flies through There's everyone as the arrow is going to find Chelby. Fantastic bubble lands in as well as Chelby gets the ultimate out of triple. So no picks to come out just yet as Luch is making his way over. Will offer all of that poke as now Seb picks up a bomb. 
will be heading towards this lineup. And the Dragon could actually go over to Abyss now as it's been started up. Yeah, triple no mana, no teleport means go back to base. Do not pass go. Yeah, and do not collect Drake unless they can steal this one. Oh. Shelby's in. <laughs> yeah, makes his way over the top, but he is going to get stunned up one more time. He steals the Dragon before dying. That is huge news as the Infernal Drake is what he picks up. I'm shocked he got it. That is ridiculous. It actually reset. That is the fadeaway jump shot. That should not have happened. But he did a lot of damage to it. And again, a reset health to like an extra 1,000 health on it. Yeah. To what it even had. And he still had enough damage in his back pocket to secure it. That is the smite that dreams are made of that he never should have had. <laughs> well, Shelby has been known to smite things away. His raid now taking a red buff for himself. Will do so relatively easily before he heads towards the top lane. And hopefully... Picks up that creep wave, which has now bounced, actually. So a lot of money going to waste here on Abyss's side. Pac-Man as well with a huge creep wave. And he get back towards Paradise. And still with a decent gold lead to back them up, however. Yeah. Abyss in the driver's seat, moving into the middle stages of this game. Dragon aside, is that maybe 2 to 1? I'd call that 1.2 to 1. <laughs> yeah. And Cloud Drake doesn't count as 1. Mountain Drake going to be a little bit more effective earlier on here at the same time, given the fact that Abyss do like to siege out with this compass triple, and Jakey looking for loot. She dodges out of the way of the Tempered Fate and everything else there as he misses the Chains of Corruption. Jakey, though, does still have to Magical Journey out of the way, flashes the arrow, and the Double Bomb's not going to find loot as he charges up his Piercing Arrow. That was a... I think that was a series of events where about 12 things in a row missed <laughs> yeah. entirely, and yes, one of them was flashed. Well, one some person. nice dodges, yeah. Yeah, we can call it dodges. I'm going to go 50-50 with dodges <laughs> and misses. I'm going to call them dodges. But that was a lot of spells thrown out. Damn right it was. People did buttons. People weren't hit by the buttons. Got so. the power of a ghost from Looch. Yeah. Helps him out there. Well, Dominic's regard picked up, though, from Looch. He's got massive damage. Well-timed, given all the armor now being stacked. Yeah. They have a bit of flat armor penetration on him, but instead of going for the Mora Malmordius, he rushes the Last Whisper upgrade. I want to see more and uh, the uh, Dusk Blade of Draktar to be picked up as his next two items. Maybe. Think about the flat armor penetration. That is ridiculous. It's a definite consideration if you wanted to take out carries. He won't be stacking armor and to take out the tanks who will be stacking it. Charo hits. Yeah, it lands on a Jenny Boy there as well. He just gets delivered to Abyss. My god, their one, two, three, four punch is insane. They have a lot of punches. Yeah, they do. <laughs> That's the best set. I was counting them up in my head. I'm like, oh, we probably should go to four, but we're committed now. As this inhibitor is going to get taken down. Of course, that turret that they disposed of earlier is going to be taken. And Pac Man does still have his ultimate. He's waiting in this side wave. Now backing. He does have a lot of armor himself. It's a much better game here for Pac-Man as well. Yeah. Getting legitimately tanky. Yeah, he's not going to be super behind. He's not against the Jacks that got a random quadra kill at 13 minutes. We're at 26, so double that time in the game. And the Aurelia really has not gotten a thing done. Had to go for a rando in second, which means tanky build. There's not a lot of ultimates actually on the board for Abyss right now, so they were baiting the Baron instead of fighting it. I don't blame them. The fight could have gone poorly, even though they had complete control of the area. And I'm not sure if Chenny had Spell Shield or not when he got hit by that arrow. But that would have helped him a lot. Yeah. I have a feeling. However, might have been why Abyss decided to go in. Chenny off screen might have used it to Spell Shield up a Piercing Arrow, something like that. Could have spelt the Go button there for Abyss, and they certainly did go. There are double Pink Wards now on this Baron buff. For a bar. As the arrow again. Yeah, flying Off through Jakey. Not going to see it. And I don't know if they even would have killed him if that connected. Jakey now placing a safe ward knowing that his vision's about to be denied. Because they actually just placed it all and then walked away. Because they have to defend that middle lane. Chenny Boy's going to be quite good at that though. Considering that he's a Sivir with a Static Shiv. The wave should be controlled. On the side of AV. They are still banking on Paradise. One of their bigger win conditions through that split pushing and damage to backline threat that he's going to have, especially with all the armor stacking that's now coming out. Yeah. Whilst he may be a tank, doesn't mean he'll die. Well, now Luch, 40% CDR, now with the blue buff, and, of course, the extra mana regen that he has, setting up for some sort of siege around this Baron buff area, or, of course, the top lane. 
something like that would be a good idea. He's now dealing with these creeps that are desperately being tried to shove back by Avant. And this is the way Abyss should be playing this out. Just slow poke, wait for the Varus to hit, half health somebody, and then move past that point. His raid's probably about to lose a fair bit. He's trying to get everyone on his team with it at the same time. And Seb is able to take down the Rift Scuttler. Double bomb, not going to find Raid, who is looking for Ebb and Flow being very useful, actually, as this bomb poke's flying in. Even two lockets, actually, for the shield activation. They didn't mix one of them up and even go for a Banner of Command. Wow. They don't want to die. They want to poke and live throughout all of it. Pack man, equilibrium strike, not going to stun him because he was relatively low health. Now just going to be able to pick up this minion wave. Paradise. Exactly he wants to do. Still actually built to deal with Looch and Raid. Pac-Man won't kill him, but I don't think he'll be able to kill Pac-Man as successfully anymore either. Pac-Man getting very tanky. These chains will be cleared. Yeah, Chenny has to be very careful. Even just get arrowed. Oh, that double hit. Yeah, massive. The teleport's coming in. It's Paradise looking for the backline right now. He's right onto T-Gun, who flashes really nicely. And the Chains of Corruption are going to head in. They find the Aurelia. Nice equilibrium strike, but it's not enough. He is going to get respawned. He gets onto Raid, who's off to the side. Dangerous positioning out of the Ashes. Pac-Man right in amongst it, getting some work done. Shadow Dash is over. Taunts himself up a Gromp, but they've traded one for one. AD carry for Jungler. Yeah, they traded and Luch is still alive, so the damage, if he sits back, is always going to be there. Raid, that was aggressive from him in terms of where he was stanced on the map. Should have walked around the Gromp direction, back towards his team. Didn't do it. And Abyss still in a position of power, all things considered. The gold lead hasn't grown too far. Triple oh. still has wave clear. Void Rush is available though, there are tunnels in the area, it can't... Well, okay, no, Chubby just to dra wants a dragon. Red buff. Uh -huh. Got it. He'll make his mind up sooner or later. Hasn't quite figured he it out. He just wants to be in the area because he has a sidestone to at least see them going towards it. Knowledge is power. Yeah, Riff Scotland is going to be taken first, is now Seb heading back to base to we'll see what he completes. Whether he can actually get that Randy ones that he's looking for. So he makes it back to base, just completes. The Giant's Belt grabs himself that Pink Ward. And you can see Luch now with the QSS completed does not want to get double bombed and destroyed. He's going to be able to keep himself safe. So, see what he turns that BF sword into. There they are. The funny thing about a QSS, like stopping double bomb, is that it'll still do the damage. You just lose the stun harder. Yeah. It'll still do most of your health. This is getting really chunky. Bard's on. That's yeah. two carries as well. Both of them. Blue Chan Raid getting caught up by that one. Double bomb. Not going to find any stuns. Oh, oh my god. That bomb damage from Triple is ridiculous with that Rabidon's Death Cap completed. Don't walk next to each other. Yeah. They've been sharing a lot, actually. As Chelby continues to get smacked on by the Baron. Takes a lot of health. But you can see now they've got the inside track here on this inner turret. And AV really want to shove this one forward. That inhibitor respawned at exactly the right time. The bombs will deal with this minion wave very nicely. So inner turret's going to fall. Fantastic play from Avant, and it's all off triple. Yeah, triple's doing a lot of damage. I actually think it's mostly off Jakey setting them up, to be fair. These Tempered Fates have been hitting the mark without fail. If he continues this, the gold difference is actually starting to shrink between the teams. They've got an Infernal Drake in their back pocket. They might want to deny the second mountain, though, from Abyss. Oh, T-Gun is going to face check and get completely destroyed. Stand United comes in. But you can see the Shen just did not arrive in time. That could spell Mountain Drake here for Avan. The Stand United was not enough to stop the damage out of Paradise and Shelby onto what is a very squishy target of T-Gun, especially with all that physical damage. And so they do deny the second mountain. You don't get to stack them now on the side of a business and next one's a mountain, in which case they have an opportunity. Look at the Elder Drake though. Yeah. Shall we now backing? Seb trying to clear our vision, gets himself some tunnels around the area as well. He's standing right on top of this vision with that ward in pink ward range. Quite nicely done as the arrow is soaring yeah. through once again. It's it's looking for triple but doesn't find him. Doesn't have cleanse triple. He used it in the last fight near the Baron means Abyss have themselves an opportunity to work around the Baron once more. Raid not having his ult. You can see it cooling down, though, on the yeah. right of your screen. Very fast. The Baron started up one more time. Abyss now with four members here. Luch hanging Bard around. Needs to hit an ulti has again. come back. 
Yeah, there's the Tempid Fate finds Luch, but not Raid, so this Baron's still taking oh. a lot of damage. That Cosmic Binding was fantastic for QSS. Keeps Luch up, he's now off to the side. The Baron's taken by Seb Shelby, unable to get in there in time, but Raid gets destroyed by Paradise. As Chenny Boy getting picked off. You can see Pac-Man just trying to get back to his mid laner. But Luch now having to flash Paradise. Will get on top of him. There's the Randuins. Yeah, Randuins is going to go off. And the shutdown comes in. Not a lot Pac-Man can do either as the Shadow Dash comes over the top. Baron Up minions will try and help him out as he's waiting for the W. But double bombs are going to come in. He's going to take a lot of damage. Does still have the GA. It's Paradise underneath his turret getting some help from Jake. Shadow Dash gets Pac-Man out of there. He's still going. This is ridiculous. He still has Flash. Uses it now. It's the Cosmic Binding not going to find him. And they wasted way too much time actually chasing him. Chen is the only one with the right idea, and he's actually about to die. Yeah, getting belly bopped here. As Seb getting some work done. Oh my god, Chen, he's so incredibly low. Bates in the members of Abyss. They have both Spell of their moves there. there. Yeah, not. Well, it is. Oh. A little bit late. Shelby's going to block that one out, though, as Pac-Man back to full health. My god, this game feels on a knife edge, and the gold is reflecting it as well. 700 between these guys. And at 33 minutes, we're back to even. As the Baron does go down to Abyss, they lock themselves the objective, but they basically all die for it. They did waste a lot of time chasing Pac-Man, who had that G, but at least it's down. However, it's now in Abyss's court. Let's try and make a power play. We'll see if Luch can actually get it going, because this Bard has been hard carrying Avant. Yeah, just ridiculous. Almost has his Locket of the Iron Solari completed as well. We'll be helping out. That shield gonna help in these team fights a lot, especially for Lucha's damage, as Chani Boy now doesn't have the spell shield. Another few seconds. And once that GA is done for Paradise, it's a little while away. You would imagine that that man is going to be really hard to deal with. Oh yeah. Two armor items completed, and no last whisper to be seen for Raid. Luch is the biggest threat. Kill Luch, win game. That's essentially what AV be looking at. As he is now the aggressor, honestly. Yeah, just pops his Ghost Blade. With that little bit of extra movement speed. Now Pac-Man fighting Paradise. Doing okay at the moment. GA on cooldown, of course. Okay is the best way to describe it. He's not doing too well. Paradise will always start to win that one. Has more sustain. But with that inhibitor up. Shelby with half health. They might actually be able to brute force their way in here. It comes down to the Ash Arrow, the Spell Shield, and if they can actually hit the right targets at the right time. Yeah, well, Luch, of course, does have that Chains of Corruption for the Disengage at the same time. As ha Paradise has backed away. Stand United's available for Pac-Man. So he's going to continue pushing this one out. In goes Shelby, heads towards the top side of the map. Blue buff is available here for Ivan as On the Hunt does come in. Nice tempered fate once again as there's T-Gun with the Jake ultimate. Jake immediately picked off as now Raid flashes from Shelby. Paradise in the back line. He's looking for Luch as the QSS comes in, but doesn't really do anything. They get rid of the Aurelia, but the on. ultimate's going to be there. Shenny Boy now without that sort of defense, but you can see Triple doing the work. AV. Paradise on top of Pac-Man as well as T-Gun's running away. Both of the carries just eradicated on the side of AE. And Seb running for his life, looking for the slow out of his barrel and body slams his way out. But there's just no aggression to be seen from this Abyss squad. As you can see, T-Gun still ebbing and flowing his way around, but his fishy self not able to deal with Captain Clock. No, he's not going to get out alive at the very least. And now, AV, they don't get themselves anything but the team fight, but they have a whole lot of map control to bring back into their favor. And we said the ball was in Abyss's court. I feel like the shoe's now on the other foot. It's the weirdest analogies to put together. Yep. But a fear in control. Oh my goodness. And you can see Raid committed to this Mercurial Scimitar right now. Does have that QSS now completed. So it's going to be even longer before that last Whisper is available. Shelby was trying to steal this red buff, but Seb's going to make his way over. Shelby's very tanky. Not exactly going to be a realistic option as the explosive cast comes out. Seb, a lot of mm. cooldown reductions. So he actually have that one baited that out of Seb though. Didn't yeah. go over the Baron wall, just went sideways, and Seb tried to ult to bring him back. Didn't bring him back, actually helped throw him away. So well done from Shelby in decision-making after overstaying. Small victories. Yeah, if Shelby's ever able to do anything, though, it's create pressure. That is most yeah. certainly it. And creatively make pressure. Yeah. Of course, being Rek'Sai means that he can go back to base and use his ultimate to be here. No Baron to be seen, just the Elder. 
20 seconds on that one. The disc with Soul Vision of the area. Chobi gonna make his way in one more time with the Void Rush. His bomb collected Whoa. by T-Gun. Throws down the Tidal Wave, immediately flashes out of the way as well as Chenny doing a lot of damage. And Seb now going to be the target of Raid on. over the wall. They're looking for it. Yeah, they've caught out Seb as Paradise is in the back line. Big ultimate from Pac-Man to try and keep Luch alive, whose health bar is still high. Paradise wants Raid, but is going to fall down. So at least his GA right here as Chelby is going to get respawned by Triple. Paradise once again trying to get this one happening, but Luch is going to explode. And Triple's going to be able to pick up that kill. Raid taking a lot of damage. Nice bubble comes in. And Evan Flow's trying to keep Raid alive. A lot of lifesteal here as Chenny Boy taking a lot of damage, but it's not enough. As now Abyss, back-to-back -back team fights are falling to this Avant squad. Yeah, AV are just team fighting so well. Paradise and Chelby are super tanks. And Luch and Raid being mostly only physical damage on their team and the only damage sources means that AV have stacked one type of resistance and just walk over them, even if it's the tanks that they kill first. As this is now up to Seb. He's here. He doesn't have vision. And he's about to find out the hard way that he probably won't get vision in time. Yeah, body slams his way out. He's looking for Actually, it. They Explosive might cast. Killed Chenny by doing this. It's dangerous. He'll probably go back to the Elder. Pac-Man's got his teleport. Not actually going to try and make anything happen. Of course, no smite in this pit. But yeah, Jenny was very, very low, but this is going to fall down. I, mean, I believe a bomb would do as much damage as this smite. Let's have a look at this skin. We do get to see this one again. Of course, the teleports and the bard ultimates. That was absolutely perfect. Even though the exhaust is there, the ash arrow is used, the cleanse was used from loot, the QSS rather, and Chelby and Paradise just don't die because Zillion can save the day. Constantly, Chelby able to play around his own items and health bars. It's just ridiculous. Like, AV, they brute forced this entire team fight. They walked at them. Chenny was a frontline member. Yeah. Of course, Paradise is end of the bargain, where he puts in work. Lots of it. Damn right, just zones away both of the tanks from Abyss. Exactly, and meanwhile, the two carries in Raid and well, Support and Tegan were running away. This is now an Elder Drake starting up the Baron. Is Seb a hero? Well, he's going to get Tempest faded up. Will he come out of it in time? No, he won't, as Chelby locks down the Baron buff. One of the last nails to go into this coffin of Abyss right now. 5,000 gold is the lead for Avant, who have turned this game all the way around. Yeah. And we said, is Seb a hero? Can he steal that Baron? Let me tell you, Jake is a legend right now yeah. on this Bard. Above and beyond for his team in game number three. It's the full roster of AV back to play, and they're showing that at 40 minutes they mean business. Yeah, well, Paradise diving in one more time, gets exhausted again, just in the bouncing castle for this guy. Is Paradise in trouble? They're trying to ward off the ultimate, but it's not going to be enough as Luch taking a lot of damage. This is the piercing arrow. He needs to land these abilities from the Paradise back end. Paradise in trouble. As, yeah, he's going to get sniped off, but the flash comes in, and Raid looking for him. He gets slowed down. Hawkshot comes in. Ooh. Bombs landed. Raid in so much trouble. Triple gets into position as another bomb's on his head. T-Gun wants an ebb and flow on his AD carry, but he is going to explode. And Luke's going to get tempered, faded. My god, Jakey is a beast as Jenny flashes on top of T-Gun. Pac-Man wants to find the AD carry and will get him as Seb is going to make his way back in. They may not be able to end right no. now as Shelby and Paradise are still making their way in. But Shelby does so a little bit more quickly with his ultimate. But they have the Baron buff, so they should actually be able to close this with four people strong. Triple may not have mana, he may not have health, but his auto attacks will still chunk out those turrets. It's the last ditch effort for Abyss. Pac-Man still looking for something, but he just can't make it happen. Seb's gonna fall. He gets a decent shadow dash, but you can see the Nexus is just decimating right here. Triple back to full health after his ultimate pops. This Avant roster look ready to play and deserving of this fourth place victory. Yeah, very much so. Avant Guard, it took them all the way to three games. They had a sub in the first, but they do cross the line eventually, albeit in a very difficult game to win. Yeah, that was ridiculously well played from this team. Abyss, honorable mention, they held control for quite some time. We saw that poke comp actually working. Difficult to execute comp, but they, it did pay off in the end. Yeah, definitely did. Well done to them. Yeah, most certainly. But we are going to throw it back to the desk to break down that AV victory. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Very good cast tonight. And with that, it was going to be a Vart guide, you know, picking up the win. And 
Prosker, and she's that upset. She's lost a party hat somewhere in a process, and uh, <laughs> as you, you know, every party has a pooper, and that is Prosker tonight. So good job. Yeah, I, no, I'm gonna go to Seb and Pac Man. Unfortunately, they played the early game very well because we we came in kind of mid game due to the pause, um, yep. and we talked about you know how Abyss really demonstrated very good side wave control in the early part of the game that traded them superior objectives, whereas Avant weren't making use of their side wave control and trading for anything meaningful, maybe a Cloud Drake in there, but were unable to break the freeze. Good on Avant, they were able to stall out long enough so their composition came online, the 90 mile per hour, or excuse me, kilometer per hour, yeah. Aurelia coming at you with the Zillion with the Sivir, get her to that back line, but Seb and Pac-Man, that's, that's your guys' duty. You had to initiate those fights, and constantly it was Raid. Raid having to stand on the front line because his team wouldn't do anything for him. But on the side of avant-garde, Janky was initiating fights really nicely on the bar. They had some great temper fates and really enable Paradise and Triple to get into the back line and take down those key carries that were really far ahead early on into this game and give them the good lead. Yeah, it certainly did. And you know, you're talking about the composition here. You have a Nami, you have the Ash. You either have to go forward as a unit or back as a unit. Yep. You can't go <laughs> forward and back with your tanks going back and your carries going forward because it's just not going to work out. However, Avant Guard did demonstrate with their full lineup, they are able to team fight with the best of them and take down Abyss Esports. However, guys, after the break, it is going to be one of the biggest matches of the regular season, if not the biggest legacy you're taking on the Chiefs don't go anywhere.